Welcome back. Okay, so um, this is for the Learn to Adjust channel. My name is Angela Henderson, and I'm going to talk a little bit today about the door and the window tool. So in a prior exercise, um, it's called Introduction to the Door and Window Tool, we talked about legging your doors and your windows into a basic floor plan, and we created this floor plan in that prior exercise. So if you have not seen that one, you may want to stop this video and go ahead and check that out. It's already uploaded on this channel. But now we're going to take the existing floor plan and we're going to work from the floor plan to make some changes to the doors and the windows so that we can better reflect what's in our actual layout that we see in the um, in the property that we're scoping. So right now we're in the plan view, which gives us like an overview from the top down. Now we're going to sh go to 3D view, so you can see what we what we did in that prior. So you can see the window. This is the bathroom window, and these have grids in them. And that's what we're going to focus on first. <clears throat> and also, I want to show you this little window we have here in our bathroom is at a higher level than the windows we have here in our bedroom. And we're going to talk about that as well. So go back to plan view. Now, if you look at your properties, I'm clicking once on the actual window and go into our properties box, you can see here that the height of our window is set at five feet. That means from the base, uh, uh, basically the floor, <clears throat> we went up five feet and that's why our windows here are a little bit taller. So we have a one and a half foot wide window two foot tall and it's five feet from the ground. That's a little bit different than these windows we have here, which you can already see are three feet wide. And then they are four feet tall and the system automatically changed the base height to accommodate these windows, all right? So we're gonna change our window style. Right now we have the window set up as a grid. You see that, yes? We're gonna change that to no. What that does is it gives us the, um, the window without having that grid format on there, which is usually more accurate when you're looking at um, the windows in someone's home. You can see that window there. And then there's some other options that are available for your window. You can, of course, you can change the color and different things like that, but you can also change the type of window. Right now it's a picture window. So you can make this any kind of window you want. You can make it one of those sliding windows, which we're gonna put into our bathroom. You can make it a hung window, which is like um, a horizontal, um, uh, from, I guess vertical. Um, I'm so challenged in that way. <laughs> but um, you'll see what it, I'll just do it and you can see what it looks like. So you see this type of window um, in a lot of older homes. Uh, well, actually, just in general, a lot of homes have this type of window. And that allows you to more accurately represent what's present. You can actually see how the line changes. That's because there's two windows that are going to overlap one another. And our other option is this casement window. And you can see what that looks like. You see how the window opens out, okay? So it's important to be able to know what the windows look like. So when you see them on a sketch, you'll say, oh, okay, that's a casement or that's a hung window. Let me show you what the vertical, um, I think of it as vertical, but it's listed as horizontal <laughs> sliding window looks like. So you see it just slides back and forth. And you see that a lot of times when you're like, um, maybe in the kitchen or in the bathroom. You see. So those are different types of windows you have available to you. You can change the window length like we talked about by manipulating. And um, you can also change um, certain elements about the door as well. Same type of deal. So let's move this door over to the center. So we'll have a little space. And all the different door types you click on the properties, they're all available. You can see that the standard door frame is going to be two feet, six inches. And we're saying it's directly from the ground. There's no, um, there's no ledge or anything, but let's say you have a, uh, let's say a little lip that you step over into your door, into your room. You can put that little lip there. Let's say it's six inches or one foot.
Now it gives you that little lip and it's over. You see how it's above the floor level. So I've been in homes where you have to step up and over to get into a room. And that's how you would represent that. But we're going to go back and change this back to the base height. And um, here's where you can do things like deduct the door um, dimensions. If, let's say, your carrier or the uh, firm you're working with wants you to remove the square footage associated with the door, if you don't already have that saved in your preferences, you can individually make those changes. The window has the same option available, so you can make this, you can change it from no to yes. And that allows you to deduct that square footage. We're going to leave it at no because we're not estimating, so it won't make a difference for our uh, example today. But um, you can change the angle of the door. There's lots of things you can do here. You can play around and really make this look like it does on site. But what I wanted to show you are the different types of doors. So here you have you know, several options. You can scroll through them and see how they behave. But one of the types of doors that you're going to use most often is your um, overhead door, which is your door for like a garage. Trying to change the uh, dimensions there. Sorry. So you can change the dimensions. Sometimes they're seven feet wide. Sometimes they're eight feet wide. Sometimes they're 16 feet wide. But you can see that's your garage door. And then the other option is the one I already have here, which is your double door. Um, your double doors will look a certain ways uh, on, on site. So it could be the single double door or you could have your bifold double door. And these look very familiar to you now that you see them demonstrated. But it's like the accordion style. So you're going to see that a lot with your older properties. Um, I don't see it as much with newer properties where people are using that. I see a lot of barn doors, which I don't. Uh, I guess you could accommodate using um, the overhead door, or you could just make it a missing wall. I don't know. Um, but those are your door options. Take a look at those within your system and play around with them so that when you get on site and you're looking at a property, you can pretty much determine how you want to handle um, treatment of your door. I want to show you really fast. This width of your double door is five feet. Xactimate has a really cool trick where I'm just deleting that door out so I can show you this trick. So the really cool trick is that when you put in your standard door, I'm using the D for a standard door. When you pop it in, it gives you your standard uh, measurement of two, two and a half feet, right? But if you take that same door tool and you drag it, I'm just putting my left mouse down, I'm dragging down, I'm dragging out to at least five feet. Once you get to five feet, it automatically gives you a double door. So you don't have to go into property to make those changes. That's just one of the little cool tricks Xactimate does. And you can move it around. You can place it wherever it needs to be. And like I said, you can go to the properties and make changes to the type of style that it actually belongs. Or let's say it's just a big old five foot long door and you want to keep it that way. You can go ahead and change it. It's a little weird looking, but if that's what you got on site, that's what you got on site. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.